a new type of device that was developed by our group. So this is a solar cell that has the ability to store energy. And what makes that unique is that it's two systems in one. So rather than having a solar cell for generating electricity and a battery for storing the electricity or the energy, uh, we have a single device that within a single architecture can exhibit the functionality of both a solar cell and a battery, right? So, so what makes it very, um, very attractive is that to some extent, it, it could resolve some of the issues of solar panels not being able to produce when there is, you know, um, a cloud coverage or when it's raining or at night because within the cell there's energy that can be stored and can be utilized uh, whenever it's needed. When you look at something like this, it just looks like a, like a piece of glass. But you know, in here we actually have very thin layers of materials that can be kind of exotic in the way they look, right? So they can look, you know, like a forest of trees. It can look, you know, like a dispersion of, 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 of a spray called nanoparticles. It can look, you know, like a, like a, you know, pyramids, right? So, so there's so many things within this that, you know, to the naked eye, it doesn't look uh, any significant, but each structure has unique properties. Those properties allow for very unique function. That function allows the development of devices. Those devices can be used in very specific applications, right? So, you know, it's kind of a, a bottom-up approach where we engineer, we design, we make, we improve, and then we put into a system, right? So, so everything that, that you see in the world in terms of systems are based, you know, on materials, properties, right? And so that's how you start, you know, your computer, you know, it has a, a chip, right? That chip is, you know, that, you know, is made of silicon, but that silicon is dope and there's multiple layers. And, you know, there's so many things that go into it that allow to achieve, you know, the computing power and the speeds of today. But everything starts, you know, at the lab, you know, in the research and development level. So, you know, all of these vials, they represent, you know, a variation of an experiment Right, so, so each one of them are unique in a sense with the intent to understand what's going on, right? So it's like taking, you know, snapshots of time or changing something so that you can see how the system, how the material, how the conditions change. And then, you know, by kind of putting all those clues and pieces together, then we can ask, actually start understanding things and making sense out of things. Right, so for example, uh, in this case, right, one of the things that we're doing is, you know, the, the solar cell device, we started with something really small, right, because we're just trying to understand the very basics. Once we demonstrate that, that it works, then we go into the larger scale, something, you know, that can be uh, studied, but also we can start developing techniques to enlarge it and retain the properties. But then, you know, we can go into something that is you know, at a larger scale and it's more, it resembles what is currently in the market, right? So when you look at solar panels, you see this, you know, arrays of cells. So we're trying, you know, to, to move our technology, push it to that level where we can start, you know, conceptualizing and, and creating, you know, a, a, a physical image of what it could look like in the future.